If you're a beginner woodworker, it's essential that your tools are sharp. In this video, I'm going to show you an affordable and easy way to get your chisels and planes razor sharp. Hello folks, well this is my video on showing you a very affordable and the basics on sharpening your tools. Now I've been in the building trades and furniture making for over two decades and this is the system I used at the beginning and if it worked well for me, I know it's going to work well for you. Now I will say this is not the system that I use today in my shop, but this is a great way to get your tools sharp if you're just starting out. So let me just go on the record and say there are a bunch of ways to sharpen your tools. Everything from fancy machines to expensive jigs. But this is the method that worked for me on a real tight budget starting out. So to give you a real life example, here is a chisel that I purchased in a big box of old tools. It was rolling around in the bottom. And you can see from the photo here that it has some rust on it. I can tell you the edge is quite dull. And so I'm going to use this as my example and walk it through from start to finish to get this baby really sharp. The first thing to do is to look how bad your chisel is. Now this has some rust on it, but what I'm looking for is I want to make sure that the rust doesn't have pits that are too deep into the metal. Also, too, uh, you want to make sure if it has any nicks or gouges on it, you have to remove those all first before you can actually get it sharp. Now, the first thought everyone has is to remove the nicks and gouges is to go to uh, an electric uh, grinding stone and to remove them out of there. But I don't like to do this because if you get this tip too hot, it will turn blue. The minute it turns blue, you lose the hardness in this. Now, you still will be able to get it sharp, but the minute you hit it against some hard wood, you're going to round that edge over immediately, and so this will be utterly useless. So let me show you an alternative to getting the heavy gouges and nicks out first. So I actually have one of these old manual crank grinding wheels. And what I like about this is I can control the speed of it versus the electric grinder. And as I'm holding this, I can feel the temperature of it um, from the stone transferring through the metal. Now, I don't do it on the end here and work it back and forth. I actually like to take the bevel part and I'll hold it flat onto the side of the stone. I can actually feel where the bevel is flush with the stone and then I will work it back and forth on the edge of the stone and I can check my results that way. Now these aren't easy to come by. I picked this up at a garage sale for four bucks. So if you can't find one of these, don't worry. A good hard file with fine teeth is the way to go. And again, you'll put that matching the bevel angle and just slowly work your way down, checking to make sure that you are getting this, the bevel flat and that you are removing those nicks and gouges. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to do this and then we'll move on to sharpening and honing this to a razor sharp edge. All right, so I've been busy at it with my stone and with the file. I've been using the file on the bevel edge there and also too, uh, flattening the back is important and I've been holding it down so it's nice and flat and working long strokes on the file. And I definitely can tell that it's getting flat. I'm getting a small edge, but if you look real close, you can see the fine scratches in the edge of the bevel here. 
So here are the items that I'm going to use to uh, slowly work up to a very sharp edge on this chisel. Uh, the first thing I have here is some plywood and then I glued some sandpaper on here and I'm starting off with 220 because uh, I've got some pretty deep scratches in this from the file. And uh, the glue that I put on there, just make sure it's a real thin layer of glue and then put the sandpaper down. Also too, I like plywood or MDF uh, versus a solid piece of wood because it's going to be more flat and more stable. The next tool is a honing guide and this was a rather cheap one. Woodcraft has some nicer ones but essentially the chisel will go in here and you tighten it up on there. And now what I have to do is I have to try and match the bevel to get it flat on the sandpaper. And this is a little bit of trial and error. So first I'll eyeball it kind of close. Now to find out if I have the angle right, what I like to do is I will take a dry marker and I'll shade the end of the bevel. Then I put it on the sandpaper, hold it down flat, and I make one stroke backwards. And flip it over and see. So if you look, I'm riding more back here on the heel and not so much up on the toe or the edge. So that tells me I have to move the honing guide forward a little bit and I keep trying this process until when I make the stroke it's covered 100%. Uh, Alright so I made my adjustments uh, and let me shade this again and I gotta tell you this takes probably the longest part is setting this guy up. Alright so I'll make another stroke down on this Turn it over and it removed all of the marker on it so I know my angle is good. So at this point then I can slowly evenly work this back and forth on my sandpaper and when you go forward don't push down too hard kind of ease up on the pressure with your fingers because as these edges get sharper you don't want it digging in and tearing up the sandpaper and uh, tearing up the wood. So I, I put a lot of pressure on it as I pull back and then I ease up on the pressure as it goes forward. Now besides sharpening the bevel, uh, I also want to make sure that the, the back side is flat too. So I'll do the same trick, put my dry eraser marker on there. and then I put it on the edge of the board and do the same thing. I hold it flat, make sure it's nice and flat on there so it's not rocking and then pull it down and you can see I still have a little bit of uh, marker showing on this which means all this has to be flattened down more. So before I move to the next grit sandpaper I have to make sure all that's flat and I want to make sure I keep getting a good edge on this. So I've been working through a different series of sandpaper grits and it really actually goes pretty fast at this point. The longest part is using the file to get this to our honing stage. So I used a 220 and a 400 grit sandpaper that I was able to pick up at uh, any DIY store. Uh, then I had to get some finer sandpaper. I went to an auto parts store to pick up some wet and dry sandpaper. And this is a 800, a 1200, and a 2000 grit sandpaper. And I worked through it uh, doing the same steps, the bevel and the, the flat edge. Then the final thing I like to do is um, I have a piece of leather 
that is also glued to some particle board in this case. And the white compound that you see on the top, well, that's a honing compound. And uh, I was able to pick that up at Woodcraft. And what this does is, again, I'll do 10 strokes, pull it down, lift it up, and pull it again. I don't want to go back and forth like that. I want to go one direction. And this will give uh, my chisels a mirror edge finish. Now, uh, before I show you this uh, I'm, and test it, I want to do one more thing before I take the hone guide off. And this is really essential because the most time you spend is probably setting this up and getting it at the right angle. So let me show you a quick trick for this. So again, since you took all the time to set this up and, and use the marker to make sure you got this angle right, the next time you need to hone the sharp edge on it again, you don't want to go through that long process. So take a scrap piece of wood and turn it over so the bevel is up and put it against the block of the wood so that the, the edge of the honing guy here comes right up to it. Then take a very sharp pencil and mark where that chisel meets the wood. Then take another scrap of wood and glue it on there right to that line. All right. So what that does is once it's dry and I take this guide off, as I said, the next time I want to sharpen this, I can put the guide on, put it up against my set block, move the guide up to where it meets the edge, and tighten it up, and I'm good for another quick honing of the edge. So here's our chisel, a close up of it. You can see I have like a mirror finish on this on both sides. You can see the difference. Uh, of it. it. It really does a nice job. Okay, now let's test to see how sharp it is. So there's several ways to check to see how sharp your chisel really is. Remember that a shiny edge doesn't necessarily mean it's sharp. Now the way that I used to always do it is I would like to see it shave the hair off my arm. But if you're doing a whole bunch of chisels and planes, you can quickly run out of hair on your body. Another way to check real quick is the edge of the chisel, if you touch it to your fingernail, it should instantly bite. It'll grip. If you touch it and it skates off, then it's not sharp. But let me show you the last way to check, and this is how my good friend Dennis Laney told me to do it. So get a piece of soft wood, in this case I have some pine, and put it in your vise where the end grain is facing up. And if your chisel is sharp enough, you'll be able to produce little fine shavings with it. In fact, I don't know if you can even see it, but the wood is actually shinier now from being able to take these shavings. And that's how you know you have a really sharp chisel. And there you are. That is how you can achieve razor sharp chisels on an extremely tight budget. Now, I will admit that initially up front, buying the sandpaper and gluing it to scrap pieces of plywood is a very cost effective means. But in the long run, if you do this for a while, you're going to want to invest in some better means of sharpening. And Woodcraft has a variety of different stones that you can purchase that will certainly last a lot longer and do a great job than the sandpaper. But starting off, this is a great method. I also said this is not the method that I use today in my shop. I have a little bit unique and different way of hand sharpening my tools. So if you're curious on seeing that, I will be doing a video, but it's going to premiere first through the newsletter. So if you don't know about it or haven't signed up already, 
I encourage you to click on that link below, sign up the free monthly newsletter. The next one will be coming out uh, sometime towards the end of July. I'll keep you posted on that. And as always, if you have questions on your woodworking, feel free to write me at woodchoppingtime at gmail.com. Because after all, my whole goal is to make you a better woodworker. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and keep on dancing.